Hello. Welcome to this group .util for internal and external API calls. My name is Greg Gifford. Uh, you may know me as Gord Tonington on places like Salesforce Stack Exchange and other similar places. So I am going to be going over script.util. It is one of those server-side JavaScript functions in Salesforce Marketing Cloud that is very easily overlooked or missed. Even in the documentation, you have to go through multiple different subcategories to get there. And to top it all off, it's not even in an API or HTTP request category. It is instead under content syndication functions, which I mean, sure, that, that makes some sense, but without knowing it is there, why would you look in that section for an API function? Uh, we will be focusing on HTTP request for this, but most of the information here will also translate to the HTTP get option as well. To note though, one major difference is that the HTTP get will cache content in a messaging environment where HTTP request will not. And that can greatly affect performance. So I would never recommend using well, I can't say never, but I would highly recommend not using HTTP requests inside of any messaging environment. So let's go into what are the benefits of using script.util. So one of the major benefits is that all methods are available for using script.util. It's get, post, put, etc. Each one of those will be available and capable of being used. There is no other API option inside of Marketing Cloud that offers this. Second part that is uh, a benefit is that it's a similar structure as the XML HTTP request from vanilla JavaScript. That being said though, um, there are a lot of like properties and actions and such that are available on the client side version, for instance, like open event handling, etc., that cannot be done inside of script.util. So I would not recommend going to that JavaScript documentation and using that as a learning environment. I would then use that more of if you're having issues operating script.util after learning it to go there to get some troubleshooting advice on those specific properties that are shared. Because going there and learning HTTP request from JavaScript, it will probably cause you more confusion than help when you come to script.util. And also it includes capabilities and customizations not available through other API functions in Marketing Cloud. This is, a great example of this is the fact that other than two other functions inside of all of Marketing Cloud's API capabilities, this is the only one that allows you to continue on with any status code other than a 200 without throwing an exception, which is a very important thing when interacting with outside integrations because it allows you to adjust your conditions and actions accordingly. The only other two places that this is possible are in AMP script. It's the post to and the HTTP get functions. They have a parameter in there that will allow you to continue on <clears throat> if it's not a 200 response. So here's a quick list of all the methods that are available. Uh, it's pretty, pretty uh, simple stuff there. So from there, we move on to how to make a declaration of HTTP request. So it's as simple as just assigning a variable with new space script dot util HTTP request. And then in parenthesis, you have the URL, which is the endpoint that you will be targeting. And that will then set up your new request. Next up is the properties. You'll see here we have the timeout 
which is an integer. It's measured in seconds, which is different from the JavaScript, which is in milliseconds. The default is 30 seconds. Now, in general, that should be more than enough time for you to be able to handle whatever your calls are. But if for some reason you need to shorten it or lengthen it, you have that capability here. Next property is empty content handling. Fairly self-explanatory of what it is. Uh, you put an integer of zero, one, or two, and that will be zero will continue. One will stop the call. And then if this is being used in an email environment, two will stop that specific context with that subscriber and move on to the next one. Then we have retries, which is just an integer showing how many times to continue to make the call before it just fails, which is very helpful in certain places you may need to require this to work. So you have a lot higher amount of retries than other times where you just want to know if it fails. So you only need to know one time if it went through or not. This allows you to control that and better be able to handle those contexts. Then we have another one, it's self-explanatory, continue on error, it's a true or false there. Uh, content type is just the content of the payload that you are pushing in if you are passing a payload. Then we get to method, which is where we just put which method we want to have on there, get post, put, patch, etc. And then finally, the post data. Now, this is the string. And note, I say string here because any object, uh, a JSON object or array or anything that is not a string must be stringified in here. Any, any actual object types that are passed there will cause an error. And this is required in post, uh, patch, put, Etc. can be pushed through without this, I do believe, but it's kind of pointless. You wouldn't really have any direction for those to update without that. Next, we move on to the methods. First up is set header. This is adding a custom header to your call. It's a name value pair. Uh, for instance, here on the example, I have custom head and then custom value. Now, again, note this has to be string values only in both fields. So anytime that you have multiple headers you need to put in, you need to set multiple headers. Set header, custom head one, custom value one, then set header, custom head two, custom value two. This will not accept any JSON or arrays or objects inside of it. Next up, we move to remove header. This will remove a specific header name value pair from the call. So for instance, on the last example, if we wanted to remove custom head one, we just do remove header custom head one, and that would remove custom head one and custom value one from the call. Then finally, if for some reason inside of your conditionals, you decide I don't want any of the custom headers for this call, there's the clear headers option and that will remove all custom header name value pairs that you have set up so far. Now we move to the execution. So it's as simple as just dot set. This will compile everything together and sends the request to the designated endpoint. One thing to note here is inside of the JavaScript version, there's different things that you can put inside of those parentheses. Inside of script.util, you cannot Anything you put in there will likely return you with an error. <laughs> now we move on to, we've sent it, we got something back. What do we do with it? First part and the part that is the most important and also the most complex is the content. This is the, all of the return content from the request. So it comes back inside of a script.util.http response object, which uses CLR formatting, which is cool, but uh, CLR formatting does not go well with uh, server-side JavaScript and marketing cloud. So in order to do anything with it, we'll have to reformat it to JSON, 
to be able to parse it. To that extent, I put a quick sample here of some server-side JavaScript code to help you get that. It's platform.function.parseJSON, and then you'll notice there's string, not stringify, string to set the format for resp.content. And that is assuming that resp is the returned call content. So that will then give you a JSON that you can play through and get all of the different parts that you need. Now, outside of that, that don't need as much crazy work to get done, there is the ability to get content type, which would be resp.content type. And this will be a string indicating what the content type of the response is. Then you have the encoding, which again is a string value to show what type of encoding there is. Then you have the headers, which will contain the, all of the headers collected from the response. To note on this, the, you can pull just specific headers by doing resp.headers and then my header name in brackets. Uh, one other thing I do want to note on the headers object as well is that if you get an error talking about CLR when you call resp.headers, talk to marketing cloud support. There is a business rule that they have that is sometimes enabled, sometimes isn't, that you need to have turned on to be able to access this. Next up is return status. This is just a simple integer explaining how the um, response to the request was. Zero is okay. Negative one is an empty URL. Negative two is the call failed. Negative three is call succeeded with empty content. Then we have the status code. <clears throat> this is the integer value of the response code. So it's 200, 404, 201, 500, et cetera. And this is the part that you would go to if you wanted the calls to continue even if they weren't successful and you'd be able to find out what the reason was and be able to have conditional code around it to handle it. So next step I want to go to is show you a live example. So here you'll see I have a quick little setup where I am going to be using requests here to make a simple API call and to create a user. Uh, here I create the user object. I just create the object. I set the name to Morpheus and I set the job to leader. I have a quick visual of the object here. And then this is going to be pulled in through the function. So let me go over to function first. Here is declaration. You'll see I set the URL. And then I have the script reutil HTTP request here pointing to the URL. Here I have the list of all the properties. I have the 30 second time out. I have empty content handling as false. I have retries to, continue on error true. Content type is application JSON. Method is post. And then the post data is the payload stringified, which the payload is what is passed inside the function, which will be that create user object. And then here I have methods. This is just for the example I have. I'm setting two different headers here to show how to do that. I have my custom header and my custom header too. Here I do a quick example of how to remove a header with my removing my custom header. This will then be completely removed. And then to clear things up, I clear them all off. Here is the execution part where we do rec.send and that will actually make the call and provide the response, which will now be stored in the RESP variable. So then here I create the string for the result string. And then here is the JSON, similar to what I showed inside of my example inside of the presentation. And then here is grabbing the headers, the content type, the encoding, the return status, the status code. This is a quick custom timeout conditional so that if the result JSON is empty, which would be if it's timed out. And I return an error with timeout object. Otherwise, I return this entire object here that has each piece inside of it. And then I go up here 
here is where I call the function, passing in that user object that was created there. And then I gather each different aspect of it. I get the results, the header, the content type, the encoding, the status, the code. And then I do a quick stringify on each of those and write them out to a page for the example. And here I will refresh this to show. And you will see everything comes through and works perfectly, which is always a good thing. You always want things to work perfectly. So back to the slide. I just wanted to say thank you for coming along with me and please keep up with this series. Shibu has been doing an amazing job and I look forward to all the future comments coming from you. Thank you.